Hello, I'm Father John Berteo. As we began our Advent season to celebrate the coming of Jesus among us, I, with some brother priests and all at the National Catholic Broadcasting Council, welcome you to join us on our spiritual journey with Mary, with the guidance of the Holy Spirit, as well as inspiration taken from the New Testament. During this first week of, of our retreat, I will focus on Mary's encounter and invitation from God as delivered by the angel Gabriel. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Holy Spirit, give us the spiritual vision to awaken our faith on this journey in joining Mary as she, in her trust and love for God, surrendered herself with the words, let it be done unto me according to your word. St. Luke writes, and I quote, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a virgin whose name was Mary, end quote. One of the ancient traditions about Mary tells us that Mary at a young age, perhaps three, that she was surrendered to the temple women to fulfill the promise her parents made to consecrate her to the service of God. By age 12, as it was custom, Mary was no longer able to stay under the care of the women in the temple. Through God's providence, Joseph, a respectful and righteous man, was chosen to wed this young virgin. It was a normal process those days for a spouse to be chosen. And then, the message from God related by the angel. Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor, David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Perhaps this message would have been a bit overwhelming for this young virgin. It would be understandable if Mary's reaction could have been one of fear or uncertainty. Mary may have feared how God's plan would roll out with her playing the major role for God. Her faith and unconditional trust for God could have awakened her faith to a higher level, knowing that with God all is possible. Also, the angel's visit could have been a confirmation of her vocation, mother of the Savior of the world. Imagine, if you will, what your reaction would be. Say you are in the church, perhaps during a holy hour, when the church is very quiet. You are facing Jesus in the monstrance, and then a bright light approaches, and you hear a small voice. Besides fear, what would your reaction be? Would you run? Maybe you would make the sign of the cross. Perhaps you might worry that you are having a medical episode in seeing and hearing things. There is no perfect answer. Each of us relates to various situations according to the way of life we live and the state of mind we are in at that moment. Mary's life was totally focused on God and open to his will. However, what does this entail? Let's keep in mind that Mary is now engaged to Joseph, perhaps making plans for her big day as any young person would be doing. Was she confused about what to do next? Was she afraid of what the future might hold for her? The fact is that Mary was touched by an angel at her immaculate conception. This meant that she already had a supernatural relationship with God. As the saying goes, once you have been touched by an angel of God, you are never the same. A more recent example of this encounter with an angel is captured in the story of the three shepherd children in Fatima, Portugal. There is also the experience of St. Bernadette of Lourdes, France. All were visited by an angel and their fears disappeared, helping them to prepare for their vocation and overcoming all obstacles that people put in their way. And there were many obstacles put in front of them. How's your relationship with God? Does it need work? 
Advent is an ideal time to give some serious thought and time to prepare for the coming of Christ at Christmas. So you could, for example, go to confession, clean up from the past, receive Jesus in Holy Communion, spend some quiet time in the church and like Mary, open yourself to the spirit of Jesus and be open to the words of the Lord's prayer. Thy will be done. Go ahead, be surprised. Let your faith be awakened and join Mary in her joy of being united with you and her son, Jesus the Christ, in a very special way. Before we close, let us pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Tomorrow, I invite you to join us as we will address the question, what's in a name? In the meantime, may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.